how much love you and I are supposed to have for memorizing Qur'an. It's, I can't even begin to tell you. The love we're supposed to have to have Allah's book in our hearts. How much love are we supposed to have to recite Qur'an in Salat? Slowly, calmly, thinking about what we recited. How grateful we're supposed to feel that today you memorized one ayah of Qur'an, a, a treasure for which there is no equivalent on the face of this earth. The words of Allah that came from the highest sky are now sitting inside my chest. They were fi kitabim maknoon. They were in this hidden vault, up there in the seventh heaven, and now they're in this vault. That's a gift from Allah. I have just been connected to Allah by His words. How much it's supposed to mean to, supposed to, mean to you and me. You know, I tell you, just like I'm, I, I, I still, I can't thank Allah enough. The first time I started learning even a little bit of the Arabic language, just a little bit, and I could tell every other word something's going on, I was overwhelmed. You know, you, you, you stumble upon a treasure that you have no, you know you have no right. You're not qualified, you're not worthy to be in this treasure vault. And you get a glimpse of it inside, and you're like, oh. you, 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 should, you and I should become overwhelmed in gratitude. Ya Rabbi, how many people don't even feel the need? They don't even know this treasure exists. And Allah is making the door for us to access it. For you and me to access it. We've clarified the signs to you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ so that you all, you all can understand. Next time you see rain, next time you see plants coming out, you remember what should happen to our iman. Every time rain comes, you should remember to recite Qur'an. <laughs> that risk came for the dead earth, and this Qur'an came for our dead hearts. إِنَّ الْمُصَّدِّقِينَ وَالْمُصَّدِّقَاتِ Those who confirm the truth, and those who gave sadaqa, who gave and gave and gave, who proved the truthfulness of their faith by giving. والمصدقات, and those who gave from the women. وَأَقْرَضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا And gave to Allah a beautiful loan. يُضَاعَفُ لَهُمْ It'll be multiplied for them. وَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَرِيمٌ And they're going to have noble, gracious compensation. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ And those who believed in Allah and His messengers. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصِّدِّقُونَ those are actually the ones who truly and like in, uh, uh, in the most powerful way confirm the truth. اعلموا, you had better know. dunya. What are the causes of weak iman? What I mean, if, if iman is all about using our time wisely, giving our priorities, are there other priorities that distract us from the real priorities of iman? Sure. So Allah Azza wa gives us a synopsis. Here's what your life, worldly life, lowly life, lesser life, the lowest life, ad-dunya. Ad-dunya comes from adna, the lowest life. All it amounts to, annama is kalimat al-hasr. The way I translate that is, you had better realize, you had better know, you had better understand. Worldly life amounts to nothing more than la'ibun, playing. وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ And this one sticks. And you just want to get more and more, and you want to, you have a mutually shared sentiment about your children, and about money. Savings, expenses, bills, the mortgage payment, the, the electricity bill, the car insurance, the, you know, the college savings account, the IRA, the this, the that, the other, takathurun fil amwal wal awlad. You, you ask any parent, at any given time, whether they're conscious of it or not, what is running in the head? Kids, children, kids, children, kids, children. Got to pick them up from school, got to buy these books, got to do that, got to do this, got to do that, got to do this. Constantly, it just invades your mind. It takes you over. And that's all your life starts amounting to. These are distractions in life. There's nothing more than games. A child, what's the most important thing to them? Abba, can I have the big panda? Can we get some Hot Wheels? Can we play? Can we play a game? Can we play hide and seek? Can we go to the park? When a kid is little, what's the most important thing in his mind? Playing. Nothing else. He can skip food, he can forget how heavy the diaper is, he can forget all that. He's still playing. He's in the zone. You know? لَعِبٌ And then you get a little older, and then you realize there's such a thing as cartoon shows. 
There's such a thing as Pokemon cards and Yu Yu Hakusho and God knows what else. You know, you realize there's movies, stories, storybooks, songs, poems, entertainment, entertainment. What lah one? You get a little older, the new virus installed on your system is entertainment. Wazinatun. And then you get a little older and you become self-conscious of your image. How do I look? I need to work out more. You know, what, what size shirt should I wear? What brand should I wear? What color should I wear? You know, you're trying to match your purse with your hijab. You know, guys trying to fix their hair in every reflection they see, even though they're bald. You know, dudes with those pencil beards, you seen those? So hard to do, it's such a work of craftiness. Ah, the pencil beard. And he's still stroking it like it's like, you know, a Kung Fu master beard. Like, there's nothing there, bro. <laughs> But it takes a long time to fix that. Girls always wear it, even the girls that wear hijab. Is it like a little high up here? It's uneven, I don't know. How does it look? The husband says, your father says it looks fine. No, it doesn't. My head is oddly shaped. Okay. Yes, yeah, something is wrong with your head, but not physically. <laughs> you know. Your image becomes so important to you. Beautification, decor in your house, the car you drive. You want to make sure you show the other what you got. Whether it's through education, what kind of car. You get obsessed with your label. You get obsessed with showing people what you've accomplished. These are the things that your worldly life amounts to. And Allah says, كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ All of that is like the example of perfect rain. Rain that comes just at the right moment. Rain that you were hoping for. The farmer, أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارَ نَبَاتُهُ The produce that came as a result of that rain impresses the, the farmer who had buried the seed. Kuffar here means farmers. Because kafara is to bury a seed. Now let me tell you, when a farmer buries a seed in the ground, he has no idea how the crop's gonna turn up. No clue, he's depressed, he doesn't know if it's gonna rain, if it's gonna be a good year or bad year. He has to do all this work without knowing any results. But when one day he wakes up and he sees rainfall, he starts seeing little sprouts of green. Is he full of hope? He's so happy that it rained. He's dancing around, all these agricultural societies. They have like literally festivals around rain. Because they know that means the entire year is good. Imagine, you and I are stressed about getting a paycheck on Friday. The farmer gets a paycheck once a year. He gets one paycheck a year. And if it doesn't rain, that year's paycheck ain't coming. If a farm is going to be, it's going to go mature, then it's supposed to be cut before it turns yellow. Allah says it'll turn yellow. And turning yellow means the farmer wasn't interested in cutting it. He didn't take opportunity. He didn't cut it. And you know what? That's worldly life. You get something, you lose interest in it. You want that toy more than anything else in the world until there's another toy that you don't have. You want that car more than anything else until the next year's model came out. 